Today I want to show you how to make a squat hexagonal box. If you can see that. Um, it's something I came up with whilst making a different box and I just tweaked a few measurements. So it's quite a nice size box as you can see. This one measures, let me get my ruler out, I mean from side to side it measures about seven inches about seven inches from side to side so it's a decent size box and height wise it's about let's have a look um about five five and a half inches tall about that um but it's just it's a nice box i've had a lot of uh, people say they like it so i thought i'd show you how i make it today so what you need is you need to have three sheets of a4 card I'm going to be using this yellow card today. This is from Paper Mill Direct. This this is um, a the daffodil yellow, um, and it's very it's a very nice good weight of card. I think it's a 240 GSM, I think, but it's um, it's a good weight of card. What you need to do is take your scorer, place your card on, and you're going to score. Now I'm not sure if you can see all the way down here, but you can see at the top, so that's good. You want to make a little mark, just a little divot at two inches, and then score all the way top to bottom at four inches. Make a little mark at six inches, and then score all the way top to bottom at eight inches. Now make sure before you start scoring that your A4 is a true A4, because I in the past I've used an A4 and it was eight, eight and an eighth of an inch wide. So this is eight and a quarter. It needs to be eight and a quarter. When you've done that. If you've got a scoreboard like mine, so in other words, the 0 is on the right and the 12 is on the left, so you're going from right to left, you want to turn your card anti-clockwise. If you're not, if you're going, if you're scoring this way, you're, you're going, um, you know, across here, so if that would be 4 inches, that would be 8 inches, you want to turn your card that way. Basically, whichever way you're scoring, your tab, which is this little bit here, needs to be at the bottom, okay? Then you need to score at four inches and at seven and a half. So you always make sure that the four inches is the bottom section, so not where the divots are, always from the bottom, and then you're seven and a half, okay? So you want to do that on all three sheets of card. And then the last bit of scoring you need to do is where your divot is. You need to take a ruler, a little mark, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to make a little mark in pencil, if I can find my pencil, um, because I want to be able to see where my little mark is. So there's my little mark. There's another little mark. So I'm going to score from this corner here up to that pencil mark. And then I'm going to score across there. But I'm just going to do the same, because I've got my ruler here, I'm just going to do the same angle. So I cross like that and then you're going to then score from the corner up to the mark so you're basically making a triangle now when you get to this bit here you must make sure you go from this section here not from the edge of the, of the page of the card you have to go from where the corner is where the intersection is score like that okay so you end up with that I'm not sure if you can see those score lines I'm hoping you can so you do that on all three sheets, making sure that the tab is always on the same side. So my tab is always on my left. Okay, so I've got my three sheets. So next what you want to do is you're going to cut up the bottom. So the, the where the triangles are, that's the top of your card. Um, and so this is the bottom section. So you're going to cut up your card and you're just going to notch it slightly, so I'm literally going to come just a tiny bit in and a tiny bit in and just angle it, just literally, so I'm going to get you cut a tiny triangle out. Like that, no, I've not quite done that very well, but anyway. Like that. Let me just make that a little bit better. This is the tabs at the bottom of your box, so if you make a mistake like I have, it's not the end of the world. 
So I would normally use a standing knife for this bit, but I decided not to today. Which probably wasn't the best of ideas, but anyway. There we go. It also doesn't matter too much if you're a bit wonky, like mine is, because these are the tabs, so you're not going to this is the base of the box, so you're really not going to see it. The reason you want to notch it out is just because you um, you really want the flaps not to bump against each other when they when they shut. Then this bit here, you want to just do a little um, tab on the side there, and again here, that line there, and then again here, and then again at the top here. So you should end up with that, obviously, a, a cleaner version of this. So repeat that on your other two pieces. Right, so there we go. So now what we want to do with each one of these is the folds that are going the folds that are going down the middle, you want to fold it so that it's a mountain fold. But then you also want where's my thread stick on? You also you will be folding them back on themselves again in a minute. But anyway, for now just do a, a mountain fold. Same with your tabs. Make sure you burnish them. There we go. You also want to fold your tabs the same direction. And the top half the same direction. Okay, so you end up with this. Now what you want to do is you want to fold these going also mountain fold so basically you're folding everything for now you're folding everything as a mountain like that. now you're going to now fold this that goes the opposite way, just that section there. So you're just going to crease it together, just pinch that corner in there to make it go in properly. Like that. And just give that a really good burnish. Okay. You're also going to repeat the same on the tab. You can actually fold this the right, the right way to start with, but anyway. So that's going to go like that. And so that is all the folding that you need to do on that bit of card. So you need to repeat this on the other two pieces. Right, so now you're going to cover it with your pattern paper. Now, the mat, you're going to need six of these. Six, so I'm going for the, the green. This is three and three quarters by three and one quarter. Okay, so three and three quarters this way by three and one quarter that way. You're also going to need pattern paper. So you need six of these. You also need six of these. So this measures at three and a half by three okay so this is three and three quarters by three and one quarter this is three and a half by three so you've got a quarter inch difference so you've got a nice mat okay so you want to go ahead and stick those down Like 
and then you're going to do the same again for the other six. So here are my six. I've gone for three in that pattern and three in that pattern. So I'm going to alternate them on the box. Okay. So now what we want to do is stick them onto the box itself. So obviously because I'm alternating, I need to do one of one pattern here and one of the other pattern there. So we're going to stick those down. The glue's coming to its end it looks like. And then we're going to use the other one, the spotty dotty one, on the other side. Now I'm going to keep to that pattern, so the small polka dots on the left, the big polka dots on the right, with my other two panels. Clear up a little bit. Right, so you've now got three pieces with all your bits stuck on. So now what you want to do is get some red tape. Uh, a lot of people don't know what I mean when I say red tape. Red tape is this tape, it's red in colour, which is why I call it red tape. Um, it's also been called power tape or ultra sticky tape, but you want red tape and you're going to Put some red tape just along this flap here and also on this flap here. I use red tape for any 3D, anything I'd make that's 3D because it's really, really, it's like um, super glue but in tape form. It's super, 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 super sticky and it just means that anything you stick is going to stay stuck. So once you've done that, now I find it really helpful to use a, a map with grids on for this. So what you want to do is you want to, in fact you don't have, if you haven't got a map with grids on, if you have got a map with grid on then what you need to do is li 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 up, line up the top of your box with, with one of your grids, take the next one, take this liner tape off and then obviously stick that down, keeping that, it's very, very important that this is straight, okay? If you haven't got one of these mats with lines on it, then what I suggest you do is, uh, is, to, is to turn your flaps in, and then line this up completely, and stick it down that way. So I shall do it this way now, just in case you haven't got a. This is just another way of doing it, really. One downside of this red tape is that the liner is quite difficult to get off, and it does stick to you. <laughs> so 
Let me warn. Right, so I'm going to have to just move up here a second so I can see what I'm doing. Right, that's there like that. So I'm going to stick that down like that. Press that in and stick that bit down like that. Okay, so then you know that that's nice and straight. Now it's a bit easier for the third panel because you've got such a long run. So for the third panel, we're also going to put tape on here. We'll do that first. Hoping you can still see. There we go. So for this one, it's a bit easier. So what I would do, turn your box upside down, not upside down, the other way around. You know what I mean, you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> My powers of explaining are not good. Fold the first end over, like that. Peel off your tape, your backing. And then take your third piece, line it up. I apologize if my head's in the way, but hopefully it's not. Line it up. And then stick it into position. Like that. You have to be very sure where you're sticking it, because once you've stuck it, you've stuck it. Now, when you open it up, as you can see, it's absolutely massive. Um, so now what you want to do is, again, put tape on those last two tabs. Now this is where the tricky bit comes. In fact, what we're going to do, we're going to do something else. Before we stick this box together, there's another step that you need to do. It just makes it easier if you do it before you put your box together. So we're going to do that next. So I'm just going to put my tape on. Like that. Now, I'm just going to get a slightly bigger, a thicker red tape. This is like a real thick one, this one. This is about a three quarter inch, I think it is. Yeah, three quarters of an inch wide. This one's only like, what, quarter of an inch? Now, open it up, and on the bottom of, so these are your tabs at the bottom, your flaps at the bottom, on the bottom of all of your flaps bar one, so five flaps, you want to put tape. Now the reason I'm using this thick one is because then you've got a nice wide, a nice um, large surface area that is sticky. So I'm going to do all but the last one. So all the way along. Missing the last one. So I've got two more to do. Now assembling this is probably the trickiest bit of this box, to be honest with you, because the actual, you know, Scoring of the panels, it's not that bad. Right, so we're gonna stop there. So that's the one we're not gonna we're not gonna put tape on. Right, so you wanna fold fold over as many or as little panels as you want. So I'm folding two panels over. Take your tape off, the backing off. And then just fold over the other side, like that, and like that, and it'll stick it down. Okay? So you end up with that. Now, this is the tricky bit. This is the tricky bit. And I haven't discovered an easy way of doing this yet. So, we'll just have to battle with it together. So you need a pair of some kind of hole punch thing. This is actually like a normal hole punch size, but it's in, um, it's a single, it's a single hole punch. And then you need some ribbon. Right, so I've got this green chiffon ribbon. You need, I would say you probably need about 18 inches, roughly. I've got more than I need here, but anyway, that'll do, it's fine. So what you're going to do is, 
If I take this box here, then you can see what I've done with it. So I'm going to do this here. Ugh. So, I don't know if you can see that. I'll hold it. So, I've pinched, I've punched holes on either side of the triangle, as near to the triangle as I can, and not very far down either. If you can see that, I can't really put it open much further. So, that's what we're going to do. So, you're going to take your take your box, squash it flat, take your hole punch, and you're going to, you basically want it to be sort of around there somewhere. Now, if you hold the two layers together, you're punching two layers at the same time, which makes it a lot easier. So, I'm going to go about there. Okay? And then squash the next one. Next two pieces together, do it again. I'm going to do that all the way around. Trying to make sure that you do it roughly in the same place each time. them punch now okay now in order to stick the base I find it easier to sort your top out first so we just kind of fold all of the base flaps in like that it's gonna be a bit of a weird sort of shape that's fine so now what we're gonna do is start threading so we'll take our ribbon and we're gonna thread through it all you want to kind of what I would do is probably coax all your all your um, triangular bits inwards first of all like that like that and like that so coax them all together so they come together like that and then they'll kind of pop down and then with it kind of closed you can pull there we go and then And then it'll, it should just pop shut. Now obviously this is where you really find out how well you've made your box. So if you haven't done your corners here, you haven't really, you know, folded them in, you might end up with a little bit of bulging like I have there. But that's, I mean, that's fine. You know, whoever gets this box is going to be so amazed by the fact you've made this box that is so big and wonderful. They're not really going to notice things like that. And if they do, well then they don't deserve your box, basically. <laughs> right, so... Put it nice and tight and but tie your bow. There we go. And then just cut your ribbon down so it's the right size. Now, with it like that, you can now turn it over and this makes this part a whole lot easier. Just gently pull up the flaps and find the one that doesn't have any tape on it, which is this one here. I can feel it's got no tape on it. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to stick the one that's opposite, I'm going to stick that down first. Oh, 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 oh. Right, so. Hoping you can see this. Now at this point in, in the proceedings you can get your hands inside but you won't be able to in a minute so and then you just literally just stick them down i usually go opposites and you'll notice that they're not you know they're not dead opposite each other and it's not a true true hexagon if you really really fiddle with it you can get it so that it's you know proper proper hexagon but my previous one wasn't 
a true true hexagon either and it's fine so so again here you can stick that down as you go further in it makes it more difficult to stick it because obviously you've you haven't got anything to press against but at the end you can always undo your bow and put your hand inside and give it a good press down from the top so that's there like that and then last but not least there we go turn it over and there's your box and if you want to add gems you can whatever you want to do so I hope you really I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you give it a go it's very easy I shall um if you go over to my blog which is www.iced-images.blogspot.co.uk um, I think there's a link in my bio to it um, you'll see this box over there and there is a um, template over there for it so there's um, a template for where you score each of the panels um, and hopefully you'll have a go thank you very much for watching